Do you ever find yourself staring at your fish tank, pondering the profound depths of air pumps? No, <laughs> just me then. Well, let's get pumping. This little gadget right here, friends, is a diaphragm air pump. Six months ago, I managed to break this very one. Why? We'll get there. But first, let's embark on a breathless journey through the world of diaphragm and linear piston air pumps. Brace yourself as we take the plunge into the intricacies of these pumps. First up, the diaphragm pump. How does it manage to pump air without any visible moving parts? At the heart of this device is its namesake, the diaphragm, a flexible piece of rubber or elastomer. When an electric current runs through the pump, it activates a set of magnets. These magnets create a pulsing movement, which then causes the diaphragm to oscillate up and down. On either side of the diaphragm, there are one-way valves. As the diaphragm pulls down, it creates a vacuum and air is drawn to the chamber through the intake valve. And when it pushes up, the compressed air is forced out through the outlet valve, heading straight to our tanks. It's a rhythmic dance of intake and outtake, providing that consistent stream of air. Incidentally, diaphragm pumps are also the most common type of pump that you'll see on the market, especially in the smaller single aquarium category. So if you're not powering a fish room, it will most likely be your main option. Nonetheless, knowing how they work and why they break is going to be important for you to understand. You see, whilst a diaphragm pump is a simple yet brilliant mechanism, as with most simple things, it comes with its vulnerabilities. The diaphragm's constant movement subjected to wear and tear, especially under the strain of problematic back pressure, which I learnt the hard way. A broken or failing diaphragm pump is very easy to spot. Its power decreases as the vacuum begins to fail, and you'll have a dribble of air where once there was a whirlwind. Diaphragms can often be replaced, although in small cheap units this is often not practical or cost effective. Now for our more industrious contender in the ring, the linear piston air pump. At first glance it may seem like just a heftier version of the diaphragm pump, but there's more to the story. In this design, instead of a wobbly diaphragm, we've got a robust piston, sliding linearly within a cylinder. Driven by an electromagnetic coil, the piston moves back and forth in a linear motion. It's like the piston in a car engine, but minus the combustibles and the revving noises. And akin to the diaphragm pump, the one-way valve plays a critical role. When the piston retracts, air gets drawn in from the intake valve due to the created vacuum. And on the forward stroke, the compressed air is confidently ushered out through the outlet valve, powering your sponge filter or aerating the tank. The beauty of this design lies in its minimal friction and wear. With fewer parts constantly rubbing against each other, its lifespan certainly has an edge. However, this is not the sort of technology you'll see in small single tank pumps and is generally reserved for fish room and commercial use where air rings are used to power multiple tanks. Now you might be thinking, well, Owain, it seems like the linear piston is the clear winner here when powering a fish room and I personally have made the switch to a Mido LA45C, which I am really pleased with. But while linear piston pumps do have the upper hand in many areas, their prowess does come at a price, quite literally. Now recently I showcased how fish room air rings work in another video, and one small addition can be a game changer a bleed valve. Introducing this tiny hero can alleviate back pressure, ensuring a greater lifespan for either type of pump. And as to that issue that I've been alluding to, well, six months ago, I knew nothing about problematic back pressure and managed to destroy my 80 pound Halia diaphragm air pump in just a few months because I immediately created loads of back pressure by attaching a steel airline splitter directly to the pump without a bleed valve. Whatever you do, don't make the same mistake and assume that if the filters are running nicely, then you must be using up all the pressure. This is often not the case, and thinking back, I probably wore through a few Eheim Air 200s in much the same way. So where does all this information leave us? Diaphragm pumps are cost effective and can be marvelous if used correctly. But remember, they're a bit like the classic Morris Minor I had growing up. Fantastic to look at, but bound to break down when you least expect it. 
As for the linear piston pumps, they are like a high-end sports car, reliable, efficient and a tad on the expensive side, but with proper care they can serve you loyally for years. So I'm not here to tell you which pump to get, I'm just a guy who made a silly mistake with a diaphragm pump. All I can suggest is understand your needs, weigh up the pros and cons and always, always keep on top of maintenance. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about the pumps. It's about ensuring a happy, healthy environment for your fish. So let me know in the comments what type of air pump you would buy. And if you liked this video, you'll also like one of these two videos over here. Cheers.